Let's go to NBC News Chief Foreign Affairs Correspondent and host of MSNBC's Andrew Mitchell Reports. Andrew Mitchell, she is live in Wasilla, Alaska, and in Washington. Vanity Fair's national editor, Todd Purdom, whose article on the recent issue uh, of Vanity Fair sheds light on Sarah Palin's rift within the McCain campaign. Uh, let us, uh, let's start uh, with Andrea in Wasilla. Uh, Andrea, what's the response in Good Sarah morning. Palin's hometown? Well, first of all, I can see Chuck Todd from here. <laughs> oh, Lord. Which is great. That's the elite media. But <laughs> she deserves it. It's okay. People here, though, more seriously, people here are shocked and a lot are very disappointed. You know, you guys you have to realize that when you talk to people here in Wasilla, there are some people who feel that all along she became too much of a celebrity, that she didn't do enough hard work. Those are the critics in Alaska, but here in her hometown, you can imagine that people are very disappointed. They're surprised. Some of the women I talked to in particular, Mika, are very sad and surprised because they feel that, you know, she really had a burden to bear, yes, and an obligation, and that she needed to prove something, and she's quitting in the middle of the job. So there is some sadness, not a whole lot of criticism, as you might expect here, but there are people in Alaska who say that she didn't do the hard, gritty work, that coming off of the campaign, the high of the campaign, even though it wasn't successful, she became a an international figure, and certainly a national political celebrity, and will continue to be, and I think will have a, a stellar career with the book, with speeches, with the whole celebrity circuit and probably talk shows. So yeah. she's got a very big future. She's got some burdens. She does have $500,000 in legal fees. She has been harassed with what many people feel are very uh, petty ethics challenges and investigations. One looking at the, the only one that's outstanding, 15 were dismissed. The only outstanding one, we're told, uh, certainly by her lawyer, is the one about the way she set up the legal defense fund. So she's she's got a lot of a lot to deal with, and she's raising five children uh, under the, the spotlight of the tabloid media. Hey, uh, Todd Purdom, uh, you wrote a piece in Vanity Fair that really, uh, uh, we were talking about last week, c caused a real divide within the Republican Party on Sarah Palin, what happened, what went wrong. Do you believe that your article, an article that, my gosh, was so discussed, uh, do you think it may have been the straw that broke the camel's back and got Sarah Palin out of elected office? Oh, I don't think so, Joe, because, I mean, I don't think the article caused a rift within the Republican Party. It sort of exposed a rift that was there and a kind of a family feud that's been brewing. But uh, I don't think that uh, Sarah Palin was thinking about me and her backyard the other day at all. I think she was thinking about a lot of burdens that, Andrea points out, are on her plate. And I, uh, the people in Alaska that I talked to when I was reporting for this article told me that she just really wasn't having any fun anymore as governor. And this legislative session that ended this spring had been kind of a disaster for her, really. No. No, not only was she not having fun, though, the, 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 uh, the long swords were out. Uh, as Andrea yep. said, uh, 15 ethics complaints filed. And uh, I believe Andrew just said 15 dismissed. Uh, she, she was a target, was she not? Not only in Alaska, but nationally. She was, and she, you know there had never been especially good blood between her and her Republican colleagues in Alaska. The, uh, she took office in some ways by campaigning against the Republican establishment. Uh, what had happened when she came back from the national campaign was that the Democrats in the legislature with whom she'd worked and had a pretty good working relationship were so upset at her role as the tough cop in the campaign last fall that they then kind of piled on to her, and she really just had a terribly hard time getting anything done. The legislature rejected her pick for state attorney general, which was the first time in Alaska's history that a cabinet nominee had been rejected, and the leaders of the Republican Party in both houses voted against her. It was really kind of amazing. Well, and Joe, just big picture, is this could this be an example of how the Republican Party, what the state of the Republican Party is, the fact that they destroy their own to an extent, because her campaign was destroyed, and, and it has continued, or is it all her responsibility, all her fault? Well, I mean, there's a lot of backstabbing going on, the McCain campaign, uh, everybody's shooting at everybody. They didn't like Sarah Sarah Palin from the beginning. Uh, Sarah Palin tied. Uh, it didn't take long for Sarah Palin to quickly distrust uh, distrust the McCain camp. I mean, they by the end they weren't even on speaking terms. 
I mean, I think the thing that's fascinating about Sarah Palin is that she's really not, in any sense that you or I would know, Joe, a politician. She'd never been surrounded by consultants or advisors in the traditional way we think of national politicians these days operating. She was her own chief advisor, and she went with her gut. And she suddenly found herself in the middle of this campaign. It was like going, people tell me, going from AAA ball to the World Series in three weeks. And then she was, you know, a staff of 20 people was imposed on her by the McCain campaign. And uh, a lot of people e e sympathetic to her felt she didn't know whom she could trust or where to look. And Andrea, um, and the, I think Todd brings up a great point, and that is this is somebody that was pulled out of uh, pulled out of uh, Alaska, thrown in the middle of the, the national stage, and maybe she just wasn't ready for that much exposure that quickly. I, I think. I think that's true. And, Joe, you know, I talked to somebody who worked closely with her and said she didn't know what she didn't know. Mm -hmm. And that's understandable because a national campaign is one of the toughest things. It has eaten up far more experienced people. I mean, look what happened to Dan Quayle, who was actually a bright person and had been in the Senate and had worked with Ted Kennedy on a lot of legislation and got killed <coughs> when the Bush... 41 people came in and surrounded him and became his traveling campaign team. They never trusted each other, and that was sort of analogous to what happened to Palin, and, and Todd certainly reported all of those resentments, mutual resentments back and forth. What also is going on is, as, you, as Todd has just said, a lot of difficulty back home in Alaska. Now she can put that to rest. She won't have daily you know, the daily grind of being governor. And as I say, she can make a lot of money. She can be a political celebrity as long as she keeps dangling the possibility of running for president. The difference is, though, that in talking to a lot of people whom I've talked to in the last couple of days who were her biggest supporters and biggest fundraisers, they do not think she is a viable presidential candidate, despite what people might say. No. That she really has, by quitting and by the way she quit, shown something in, uh, to the, the national political strategists in the Republican Party that will make it impossible for them to have fundraisers for her and to put together a national campaign. I don't think that's in the cards. I want to apologize because Todd cleared up for me. She wasn't having fun. Now I understand. Oh, just, oh, they elected oh, her already, have fun. No, no, Donnie, she wasn't having fun. Now it makes sense. Oh, oh, we're going to no, talk, no, no, she just wasn't having fun. You know, yeah, your conversation, talk. Joe and Andrea, on how she was sort of plucked from obscurity onto the national stage, it just, I, I'm going to have to write something. There's so many parallels to women in television and not any that I could bring to the table this morning because it will amount to what appears to be bitterness but it is the truth you pull um, them out too pretty. you pull um. them out young and pretty and then you spit them out right when they're actually ready and weather beaten Maybe and actually spit out handle she was it. Incompetent. is that um, possible because she was not ready because she was, the reasons. Yeah. So I just wait, watch and, the interview and, with Katie Kirk. You know it's not just you know, her fault. None other than uh, I, I Todd, we've got to go. But Todd, didn't you uh, have the great political analyst uh, Barack Obama telling associates when she was picked that it was hard enough for him to ramp up over a couple of years for the national stage that this was going to be coming too fast for her or anybody in her position? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, he had a miserable time starting out as a national candidate in many ways, and he told his advisors he didn't care how good she was. It was really a stretch. Uh, yes. All right. You can, yeah, oh, we got to wrap it up. We'll get, get to the top of the hour. You can catch Andrea on MSNBC's Andrea Mitchell Reports, 1 o'clock Eastern Time, live from Wasilla today. Andrea, thank you so much. Todd Purdom, thank you as well. We've got some good guests, too. Thank so you. Tune in. Great. Andrea, thanks. 